What's going on guys? How are we all doing? Today's video I wanted to talk about some of the most important characters in their squads besides being the leaderships and what they kind of bring to the table for that in for that particular team whether it be a leadership, a tank, or not leadership, gosh, a support or a tank. We're not talking about leaderships in this video. A support or a tank. Um, it could just be like another DPS attacker, a lot more of a TM game manipulation, control, lots of different things in these ones. And I want to do this because we just got a new tool recently that is the GAC meta tool in .gg on the website for that. And you can see here there's a home page, there's a squads, there's a leaders, and there's a counters page. So there's a lot of different ones here. Today's one I want to just talk about is going to be the um, just the, the squads. I don't want to go too much about leaderships because we're not going to be talking about leaderships in this video. But I want to talk about some of the most common um, squads for offense and defense. And this might just be offenses. We'll see how long this video takes. Um, but we'll probably try to get both defense as well in for this video. So I want to talk about some of these guys for a second. So this is a Padman team. We'll just kind of round up. If we see multiple teams here, we're going to round up as just one whole team. We're not going to get, you know split up and talk about two different variations for the team. So for like this team, Padme, um, let me talk about one that has these four. You can see here, Padme. Let me scroll up a little bit. So you got Padme, Ahsoka, Anakin, and GK. Uh, we're not going to be talking about Qui Gon this because nobody really uses Qui Gon. I think he was only used here for the past feats, I think. Um, but yeah, we're not going to be talking about Qui Gon. We're going to probably talk about one with three PO, um, Shakti, Yoda, or probably R2, I'd say. Maybe Barris as well. There's a lot of different fists there. So for that team, the one that is probably the biggest component in that whole team and why it works so well. There's a couple of them, but out of these two I'm thinking of, it's going to be between GK and JKA. Um, I would think that Anakin's a little bit more important for that team because of the extra damage and also the um, synergy with um, Padme. I know GK has a very, very nasty taunt, um, but I feel like if you take out Anakin from that team, it just gets counters so easily um same thing could be said about gk they kind of are ones i would say are a little bit harder to you know go without in these ones but i do find anakin to be a little bit more important for this team and uh he does a lot for it as well a lot of extra bonus turns a lot more damage output so he's kind of a scary one so i, I think anakin's definitely one to go for there so in this next one here is a gas um 501st full 501st no uh no shot or uh, no um no soak in here, just the clones. Um, the one here I would say is a, is a pretty easy one. It's going to be Fives. I'm pretty sure this one's Fives right here. Fives is a very, very important character here. Without him, um, it's going to be a lot more tough, I'd say. Rex is a, is going to be up there as well. But I do think that Fives is a little bit more important than um, than Rex in this one. Just because of his taunt that he can have. And also more assists. But most importantly, the, 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 the TM that he can get from any other clones getting hit. But also the sacrifice whenever another clone does die. I think those are all playing a huge, huge part here. And it kind of outweighs what Rex can give this team as well. So I think Fives is the one to go for here. Next up here, we're going to talk about Darth Revan. And this is the not, um, not going to be talking about Darth Revan because we no leaderships. But outside leaderships for Darth Revan, I do think that Bass of Sean Fallen is the go-to here. Um, however, you can still get away without using a BSF here and just using the full five Sith Empire without her. And it can do a pretty good job on defense, but um, I do think that when you take out BSF from the team, it gets countered by a lot more easy teams. Um, one, for example, is the Bounty Hunters. The Bounty Hunters can just roll over these guys without BSF here, um, and the Night Scissors can as well. So I do think BSF is a very, very key component here with her fears, her ability blocks, and her shocks. A lot of debuffs here. And the big thing here, I think, is a CBM, the Corrupted Battlementation, with the less crits and the less counterattacks. So I think that she's a very, very huge thing here. And and without her, she's going to be kind of uh, the whole team can be kind of bad. I feel like so BSF for sure there. Um, this one's another clones. We'll just talk about this as kind of again. Maybe not actually because I do feel like this is the same thing as the one before. Yes, just fives. I think fives is going to be super super huge here, huge here as well because of the sacrifice. So yeah, just fives there. Same there with uh, these other ones, kind of repeats. But now we'll go and talk about some of the CLS and the rebels. So for CLS rebels. Um, we got a new guy um, just, that came up into the game not too long ago. And so right here, this team right here, um, the CLS, Chupio, 3PO, Chewbacca, and Han. That team right there, those five, that is a very, very nasty team there. Um, I did a video not too long ago about some of the strongest teams um, for the game. I think he was in If he's not in there, then I might actually redo a video and just talk about the defenses right now that are very, very strong for TW and GACs. Talk about them, maybe go back into some of the modding behind that team and those teams in general. But this team is one I've been talking about a lot recently, which is um, the CLS with 2PO and 3PO. 
And this team is so dang good because of Chupio's unique and just what he can do and bring the table for the whole team itself. Um, he has an incredible little um, dispel and also gives more protection on his little first special. But the most important thing I feel like there is the the blind. I think the blinds are really, really huge and key. Um, on top of that, he has a crazy, crazy awesome unique with a lot more stat sharing. He gains 40% of the... Of the um, max like health offense protection all these other stats that are from the from the rebel leadership and then also gives out 20 percent so half of that 40 percent to other rebel allies so um with how mine's mod i'm not going to show but for mine i have around 9.1k offense on my cls and 20 percent of that giving that to my han and chewy is around 1800 so that's a lot more offense giving out to those attackers and that's a very very scary thing to go up against um so this can be used both offensively and defensively i recommend this more for defense at the moment because of how strong it actually is um if you see this team on gac or tw it's going to take a very very strong strong team to kill this and I do think this is one of the best teams in the game for defense outside of the GL. So definitely keep an eye on that team for sure. But in this team, I think, regarding Chupio, I, I think Chupio is going to be that one that brings the, t brings the whole team together with the unique, with the stats. But also the blinds and control that he does have with the extra healing on the protection. And also the nice AoEs that he can give. And also, I mean, everything about him. The, the, the assists and the basics and the exposes with how 3PO is going to be here as well. I mean, this is a very, very strong team. And this guy, Chupio, is going to be one for the team that you need i mean this team is very very good if you don't have a chupio outside of that i would say for the whole cls team i do think chewy the old the og chewy is the one i would go for because he has the guard mechanic and that's a very very key thing there but if you have chupio i would say chupio is going to be a big one there under the cls team for sure um let's continue here let's just keep going on here uh, we can talk about Trey here for a sec um we're not gonna be talking about this one with vader because uh, vader i feel like is going to be in this whole different realm of teams that you can use on attacking um to kill some of these gl so we're not going to talk about him but for Trey, i do think that um with the whole triumvirate let's just talk about the triumvirate just the whole triumvirate out of those three which ones outside of Trey are the really the really really key ones and it's really just those two scion and nihilus um personally i do think that nihilus is the best bet here. Sion can be good with his tanking, but without Nihilus here, you don't get any easy Annihilates, no more Dispels, no more increase the cooldowns, and it's just going to be a little bit trickier of a team. However, you can beat Geos, and I'm pretty sure Mon Mothman teams right now, with just those two, Trey and Sion, but um, sometimes you do need to toss in a third just to play it safe with Nihilus being there. Um, and without him, it's going to be a bit tougher, but like I said, you can beat a couple of teams out there with, without Nihilus, but with him, it brings the whole team up to a different level and makes them a lot easier to counter teams with. So I do think Nihilus is going to be the best one there for the team besides the leadership for Treya. Next up here is the Supreme Kylo Ren team. So for this one, really any variation, I'd say, um, the one I would go to that is a good is a really great support and helps a team with more damage and turns is for sure hawks hawks gives out an easy bonus turn out to kylo at the start of the battle he has a massive a or a massive assist rather he has a lot more mechanics with tm and stopping enemies tm gain if it's a full first order team um a lot of great stuff there i feel like that's a very very easy one to put on the table for that um I want to talk about JKR here. So um, any JKR teams, really. We're going to save Luke for a different team here. Um, but this is a Bastil. But just replace the JKR with um, Bastil lead. Um, so for this team here, I would say Jolie is the one to go for here because of the revives. I mean, revives are a huge thing. I would say GMY is up there as well. But I feel like out of those two, Jolie is definitely the one you want to go for just because of the revives. Um, without the revives, um, you're going to be struggling quite a bit. There's going to be a lot of different teams you're going to be fighting with your JKRs if you do use them on offense that you need some revives. Um, ones I'm thinking of are GG off the bat, um, perhaps a mirror match, maybe some CLSs, but for the ones I usually would say that people use the most versus with the Jedi is the Grievous teams, and there's going to be a lot of people dying on those, and you want to make sure your Jolie is going to be surviving enough, and as, as long enough, to get more revives out for your team so you can get more turns in and just kill them while they keep on getting with Grievous's bonus turns happening with the deaths of the Separatists. So Jolie is definitely the one I would go for here for the best one on the Jedi team. Um, continuing here down the line, some Geos. So Geos, besides GBA, of course, he's a great one. I do think that Spy is probably the next best one here in terms of what it can bring to the table and what he gives out um, to the whole Geos. And I think that's a pretty key part 
for the damage on this team is Spy. He gets a lot more stacking offense for all the debuffs. I think it's a buffs as well. I think it's for both. Any stats effects, I think he does a lot more damage. But I like the the part where he gives out the exposes. I think the exposes are very, very key as well. Um, and he gives a, he gives himself a little more TM whenever I think a debuff is given during that um, Geo's turn. So a lot more TM, or TM gain rather, not manipulation, more TM gain. Um, so having that TM gain, coupling that with his big damage, it kind of proves and makes for a very strong team for offense and also geo um also geos for defense as well so both sides of the field there so spy is definitely the one i'll go for there next up here is some jtr um this one's pretty easy as well it's going to be bb8 in my opinion it's not going to be this whole team here with the weird og finn uh it was that trooper and then ray um i would just go for any other team honestly i like the r2 one with um the vets that's a defense team i like a lot but I would say for any JTR team, I think bb 8s is definitely the one I would go for that's going to be helping out the most in terms of what the whole team can do. More assists, some more um, counter, yeah, counters, I think. Yeah, he gives out counters. But most importantly, the exposes on crits and all the extra damage he's going to be giving out and TM he's going to be giving out as well. So that's a huge, huge thing for that team. The Night Sisters, we got this Talzin team, but you can be really about any of the ones for either Sash or Talzin. Um, I do think though Daka is going to be the one to go for here, even if we're not talking about either leads. Um, Daka is just so dang good here because of the revives. It's pretty much the exact same reasoning for the Jolie and the JKR team because of those revives. Without them, this team really is going to be struggling pretty hardcore. On top of the revives, she can give out a lot more stuns. And those are going to be scary as well because she has a pretty good chance of landing two stuns um, with her basic, which is definitely a huge thing. With Talzin, if she had, if she dies or really anybody dies, you got a lot more um, basics happening with the assists. And that fuels her even more with more health regaining and also more TM gaining, unless she is dazed or cannot gain any more TM. But if you don't have those on her, she's going to be getting so many more revives, a lot more basics for, for more potential stuns. So Daka is definitely the one I'm going for here. Um, for troopers here, um, we now got Pete in the game. And with Pete, I would say he's going to be the one I would go for outside of Veer's lead. Um, these ones are a bit outdated, I'd say. There's been a bit of a gap between the new, like, the new characters we've gotten until now. So I would say Pete is the one I would go for here because he has Emperor's Trap with more damage. He has a Dispel for the light side allies or light, light side um, enemies. He has the um, inevitable failure with giving out even more stats in the mark, which is very, very huge. And he has some more assisting in there as well. So there's so much thing with so many things with Piet. He is definitely the one I would go for here. Stark is a very good one as well, but I do feel like Piet kind of trumps them right now with how he's going to be working. So I think he's definitely the one to go for here. And this team here is a Vader team. So I, th I think Vader in any variations with him being in leadership or not with Thrawn lead. Um, I still think that Watt's going to be the best one to go for here in terms of what he gives out just because of the text. But I know, and this is the GL counter, you need a lot more parts to the puzzle to really complete the counter, like the Thrawn, like the BSF sometimes, maybe a P instead of Treya. Um, so it's really going to be hard for me to say between Watt and Thrawn, but both of them are very, very key. You need a fracture on the GLs. Um, and you need the tech from Watt. Out of those two, I do think that the tech is a bit more important because you just need it on the Vader, the weapon tech, you need that, and you need the tank tech on some of these guys. But also you need the, the Thrawn's Fracture, so maybe just say for both of these, you need them in these Vader counters for sure versus these GLs for Ray and Kylo. So. I think we're going to probably wrap it up there for today. That's a lot for offense. Maybe we'll probably do a video talking about these defenses one, defense ones um, because there's a lot of them. There's a lot more Rays, Grievouses, you know, all these certain guys on the, the field for DAC defense. I mean, there's so many you guys can see here. So we'll probably say that for a different video. But if you guys agree with any of these ones for my offense, definitely let me know. Um, these, are the, these are the most seen meta squads on GAC and their attack rates and all these sort of things and the amount of times you've seen them. So I think this is a pretty good um, uh, conglomeration of teams here of, uh, of ones you probably see the most and ones where you probably use the most. Which ones you want to work on the most because of what they bring to the table and just kind of their uses in general. So with all that being said, guys, if you enjoyed today's video, give it a like, share it around, and sub to the channel if you guys are new here. Um, if you have any more video ideas you guys would like me to do, feel free to hit me up down below in the comments or if, if you would like to join up in Discord. Um, link below in the description as well as our patreon page and our channel memberships go check them out guys and until next time i will see you all later peace out and have a good one